I welcome you all to this Mass, all those people at home, all those people following us online around the world. I welcome you in a special world to this Mass. And we shall begin as one family, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And for us to prepare ourselves for this sacred mystery, we want to recall that we are sinners before the Lord and we are in need of healing and forgiveness. I confess And may Almighty God have mercy on us all. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Shall we stand wherever we are and praise the Lord? And peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on, the place, on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, who is over the household, I will trust you from your office, and you will be cast down from your station. In that day, I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with your robe, and will bind your belt on him, and will commit your authority to his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. He shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. And I will fasten him like a peg in a sure place. And he will become a throne of honor to his father's house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, our response is, O Lord, your merciful love is eternal, Discard not the work of your hands. O oh Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I praise you. I bow down toward your holy temple. O oh Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. I give thanks to your name for your merciful love and your faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your promise over all. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. The Lord is high yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal, discard not the work of your hands. O Lord, your merciful love is eternal, discard not the work of your hands. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor, or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Listen now to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today, Jesus takes, us, takes his time to ask the disciple, that very important question that we are familiar with. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Maybe I would say these are two questions. Because it goes again and narrows down that same question, directly asking the disciples and saying, but who do you say that I am? I find this question, or these questions rather, from Jesus interesting. Interesting because they take us back to basics. These questions take us back to our catechism. And I know that there are people who think that catechism is something that you go through and graduate from. No, catechism is the framework of how we Christians or Catholics should live our lives. Yes. And some people, I'm sure, are now wondering how Jesus is taking us back to catechism. Well, this very question, who do you say that I am, goes back to the fundamental framework of our belief in God. The first basic question we are asked if you remember, during our catechism is, why did God create you? And we all answered that. To know him, to love him, and to serve him. And I know that many of us went through this question like an exam question, and we got 100%. But this question and its answer is an invitation to a new life. So yes, Jesus takes us back to catechism. We are created to know God. Hence the question, who do people say that I am? And the question, but who do you say that I am? So now let us try to respond to, to these two questions as followers of Jesus. These questions are at two levels. And there are two levels of operations, so to speak, as Christians. We can choose to operate on one or the other level. The first level is where most of us are comfortable, comfortable to, be, to be and operate from. Who do people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. It's easy to identify 
with what people say God is. And we do that most of the time. For example, we like to listen to the priests say something about God, and we feel reassured that at least we know something about God. I always call that knowing God from neighbors. I always call that knowing God from neighbors. Even if you listen to Father Arimoso preaching, that's second-hand information about God. I can never give you first-hand information. So I always call that knowing God from the neighbors. But we have seen from the answers given by the disciples that the knowledge from neighbors is not accurate. Is not accurate. Now, we can choose to live our life at the second level as well. This is a much deeper level where we take responsibility about our knowledge of God and how we live that knowledge in our own lives. Jesus asked, but who do you say that I am? This is a level where most of us don't want to operate from. This level is a little bit uncomfortable because it touches our own vulnerability about our own belief in God. This level is uncomfortable because there we are face to face with that which we believe in. Many people keep asking me, especially with what is going on in the world today, they ask me this question. Father, where is God in all this? Where is God in all this? And I always try to be polite and say something hopeful for these people because I understand what they're going through. But perhaps I should be more crude and say to them, first of all, answer the question, who do you say that God is for you? Then it's easier to answer the other question, where is God in all this? When you, ask, when you answer that first question, who is God to you? Who do you say God is to you? Then it's easy to answer the question, where is God in all this? I think maybe that's how I should be answering that question from now onwards. And I think this question is important because answering the question, who do you say God is in your life, also reflects your own identity. And your identity comes with some kind of responsibility. We have heard today Peter answering correctly. Of course, we know that God rigged a little bit here because Jesus says that it's not you, Peter. My Father in heaven has given you the answer to that. But never mind that. So when he answers correctly, the next thing is that it's followed by a huge responsibility. You are Peter. And on this rock, I'll build my church. Wow, that's not even a privilege. It's a huge responsibility that is given to Peter because he has answered, answered correctly. He has answered that question correctly. Now, I want to take Jesus' questions to yet another level. In the past few days, we have been going through a storm as a result of the pastoral letter that the, our bishops issued out. I've been following the responses with a lot of interest. So I want to ask that question again. What do people say the church is? What do people say the church is? This question has been answered in different ways by different people, especially on social media. Someone commented on Twitter or some place like that saying, the Catholic church is a gigantic and well old organization, and these guys should not fool around with it as they do with the opposition parties. I smiled and said to myself, no, 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 we're not, we're not that. We're not a well old machine. We're not that, we're not that. The understanding behind that comment is that the church is a third force which steps in when other alternatives have failed. That's, the, that's the, the perception behind that comment. We are not a third party. The, 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 we are not a third force. The church is not a third force which is waiting to come in or to step in. The Catholic Church is the first force that will always be there 
in terms of peace or in terms of strife. Always standing for the truth of God and for the voice of God. It's not a machine that is well able to step in as a third force. Then there was that comment again. It's not even new. It's been used many times in history by politicians. The church's place is in the pulpit and not politics. That the church's place is here, in the pulpit here, and not in politics. The Brazilian Archbishop Helder Camara was right when he said, when I give food to the poor, I'm called a saint. And when I ask why the poor have no food, I'm called a communist. He was right. What do people say the church is? There you go, a very poor image of the church. The church is placed in the pulpit. The church is a voice of God, and God is not confined to a pulpit. God is not confined here. Even if the bishops don't issue out a pastoral letter, God will continue to speak in many other different ways. God will continue to speak through the works of the church. The church runs schools, the church runs universities, the church runs hospitals, the church runs children's homes, the church runs social centers, the church runs parishes, the church runs media houses. All these are platforms for evangelization and God will continue to speak. The project to silence the voice of God will always be futile. The biggest tragedy, I think, with any human being is to decide to live at odds with his or her own creator. At the end, there is accountability. There is no single human being who will not be accountable to God. At the end, you walk alone towards God. No big cars, no big houses, no family, no cronies around you. Just you. Just you like you came from a mother's womb. Just you alone, facing God, being accountable for your actions. And you, what do you think or what do you say the church is? The church is an opportunity for conversion. And wherever we are, following us online, let us stand and now profess our own faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things seen and visible. I believe in the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the book of the God and the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, cause some sins shall with the Father, through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was inclined by the Holy Spirit and became man. For our sake he was crucified on a pontius pilot. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this is him one who have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now bring our prayers to, to God our Father. To God our Father, we... <coughs> 
pray for shepherds, the bishops, give them the inspiration they need to lead and to stand for truth, give them courage, give them hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Dear God, our Father, we remember so many people struggling in this, during this time of the coronavirus and economic troubles. Strengthen out your hand, Lord. Console them, comfort them, and give them hope. Lord, hear us. Remember all those who are grieving at this time, having lost their loved ones through the virus. Lord, again, we ask for comfort, for consolation to all those brothers and sisters of ours. Lord, hear us. In the silence of our hearts, wherever we are, let us bring our own prayers humbly to the Lord. And dear God, our Father, these are the prayers we bring to you. And many other prayers deep down in our hearts, prayers that we know already, but we still ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, this bread we offer, fruit of the earth, work of our Let us now pray, my sisters and brothers, that this whole sacrifice here may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O oh Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and of salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom he made all things, whom he sent us as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest comes in the name of the Lord. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Robert Ndovu, our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us so we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We shall now stand wherever we are and pray in the words our Savior taught us, as we say together, our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, wherever you are. And with your spirit. And wherever we are, we can always acknowledge each other's peace and encouragement. Lamp of God. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and happy are we who are called to his banquet.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O oh Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless us all wherever we are, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wish you all a pleasant day. <laughs>